Coming up on Sports Scene, China beat South Korea 1-0 in a clash of under-20 four teams to wrap up the last friendly of their preparations for the Hangzhou Asian Games. Despite the absence of striker Lionel Messi, Argentina continued their Asian summer tour by defeating Indonesia 2-0 in a friendly in Jakarta. And Russian top seed Daniel Medvedev freezes past the USA's Marco Giron in straight sets in the first round of Germany's Halle Open. Hello, thanks for joining us on Sports Scene. We're live from Beijing. I'm Mike Fox. We start with the build-up to this year's Asian Games in Hangzhou and China's under-24 football team, who will be representing the host nation. They closed out their warm-up matches with a 1-0 win over South Korea in Jinhua. South Korea won 3-1 in the two sides' first encounter on Thursday, but the hosts are able to show massive improvements four days later. The only goal of the game comes on the stroke of half-time, when Ba Dung finds Sun Chin Han for a simple finish. The visitors try to get back into the contest in the second half, but find keeper Han Jia Chi in decent form as it ends 1-0. Dejan Djurjevic and his team can now switch their focus to the Asian Games. The draw is yet to take place. Meanwhile, China's senior team are preparing for their second friendly in five days, with Alexander Yankovic's side set to host Palestine in Dalian later on Tuesday after beating Myanmar 4-0 last Friday. The Serbian coach now has a first win under his belt as China boss and is now switching his attention to the inclusion of some new faces in the team. We will use some players who play the first game, but we will also use some new players. No injuries. Only Wang Shenchao and uh, Wei Zhen with a fever a few days missed the training, so I don't want to push them to play when they're not uh, totally recovered. But they are with the team and everything is okay. First, because we always need only 100% players ready on the field. And I'm happy to see today, the last day before the game, all the players very, very motivated, focused, and uh, no injuries. It's true that we, against Myanmar, we scored four goals and uh, two disallowed in six, and we had five or six 100% chances. But which is more important for me, we gave some spaces that normally we should not give. Uh, two counters uh, from our opponent came from our bad positioning, and we put the Focus on this. Following a 2-0 victory over Australia in Beijing last Thursday, Argentina made it two wins out of two on their trip to Asia by defeating Indonesia 2-0 in Jakarta on Monday. The visitors are without key men Lionel Messi, Angel Di Maria and Nicolas Otamendi. Despite their absences, it's a sellout at the Galora Boncaro Stadium with those in attendance, including Indonesia president Joko Widodo. Argentina nearly take the lead in the 28th minute after Jordi Amat is caught in possession by Julian Alvarez. Facundo Anote is denied on the line and Alvarez sees his follow-up well saved by keeper Hernando Ari, but the world champions do take the lead 10 minutes later and in spectacular fashion. Check this out, Leandro Paredes unleashing an absolute screamer from some 30 yards. Harry with no chance in stopping that, despite getting a hand to it. The home side nearly get a shock leveller though, seven minutes into the second half. And you know, Martinez is able to tip Elkan Bagot's header over the bar. And two minutes after that chance, it's 2-0 when Giovanni Lo Celso's corner is met by the firm head of Christian Romero, who was an ever-present in the side's Qatar World Cup title run. 2-0 is the final score. More football news is next, this time from Euro 2024 qualifying. England's Bukayo Saka scored a hat-trick in a 7-0 win over North Macedonia at Old Trafford as the three Lions tighten their grip at the top of Group C with a fourth consecutive victory. Captain Harry Kane opens the scoring with his sixth consecutive international goal to stretch his tally as England's all-time record goal scorer to 57. Saka then opens his account seven minutes before the break by rifling the ball into the roof of the net from inside the box. Having missed a glorious chance earlier on, Marcus Rashford playing at his home stadium, of course, makes it 3-0 on the stroke of half-time after being set up by Jordan Henderson. The goal of the game comes two minutes after the restart when Saka shows off some neat control and blasts a volley right into the top corner. Saka then completes his first international hat-trick four minutes later by finishing one-on-one -on -one thanks to Kane's through ball after an injury-plagued season with Man City. Calvin Phillips gets his first England goal in the 64th minute before Kane gets his 58th international goal by scoring a penalty with 17 minutes left to play. 7-0 is the final score. England are now all but assured of making it to the finals in Germany next year. They play Ukraine on September 9th, while fourth place North Macedonia hosts Italy, who will be seeking revenge after that famous World Cup qualifying playoff defeat. No surprise that Gareth Southgate wanted to talk about Saka after the final whistle. He also revealed that the Arsenal man nearly didn't play due to injury. He's had it for a few weeks and um, it, it's an injury that just needs managing, um, but it would have been easy not to, not to appear. And I think when you then have probably one of the best nights of your life, um, it's a reminder to everybody that it's worth going through those things. And yeah, to, see, uh, to see the joy on his face, um, he's such a popular member of the team and so humble, works incredibly hard and of course talented. He's been finishing like that all week. So um, yeah, it was uh, an outstanding performance. After coming up with a thorough tactical plan, we tried to implement all those ideas. It was obvious that our team started doing that, but due to the strength of the side that was opposing us, we actually could not stay on the same level. We must congratulate them on their good game, without being too harsh on ourselves, because their squad are very strong. Elsewhere, Cristiano Ronaldo looks like he has no intention of slowing down as he looks to become the first male footballer to play 200 international matches. The Portugal captain will reach that record if he features in Tuesday's Euro 2024 qualifier in Iceland. The 38-year-old now buys his trade in Saudi Arabia for Al Nasser and is already his country's most capped player and is the men's international record goalscorer with 122. The five-time Ballon d'Or winner also became the first man to appear and score in five European championships two years ago and at the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, he became the first male player to score at five different World Cups. The former Man United and Real Madrid striker made his international debut in 2000 
2003 and has two major honours after leading his country to success at Euro 2016 and then at the inaugural UEFA Nations League three years later. Okay, you're watching Sports Scene on CGTN, still to come. Russian top seed Daniel Medvedev breezes past the USA's Marco Giron in straight sets in the first round of Germany's Halle Open. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives, new possibilities. Wherever you look, we are there to see, discover, explore. We put the pieces together to find what really matters to you all around the world, all around the clock. Our reporters are at home across the globe. From our headquarters in Beijing and production centers in Washington, Nairobi, and London. China Global Television Network. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN. See the difference. We return with tennis from the Halle Open, where Russian top seed Daniel Medvedev cruised past the USA's Marco Giron in straight sets to reach the second round in Germany. Medvedev at the bottom suffered an opening round exit last week in Stuttgart, but starts strongly in Halle as he breaks for a 3-2 lead thanks to a passing backhand. The 27-year-old has enjoyed success on grass before, having lifted an ATP 250 trophy two years ago in New Yorker, and last summer the Russian advanced to the final in Halle. The world number three slips and falls when he tries to chase down a drop shot, but he quickly signals that he's not injured before getting up to continue. The top seed came in, having won both previous meetings between the pair, and lands a driving forehand en route to taking the opener. 6-4. Giron underwent surgery on his right hip in December 2015 and his left hip just two months later. Those operations dropped the man from California outside the top 750 in the world, but he's been steadily climbing back since. The 29-year-old shows his impressive court coverage to win this rally as he digs deep for a brilliant passing forehand that Medvedev has absolutely no chance of reaching. But the Russian claims the second 6-3 to complete the straight sets victory when Giron double faults on match point. The man from Moscow becomes the first male to reach 40 tour level wins in 2023. Next up for him is Serbia's, Serbia's Laszlo Dijere. Over in London at the Queen's Club Championships, home favourite Cameron Norrie at the top beats Serbia's Mirma Kekmanovic in straight sets. The British number one lands a forehand volley on his way to grabbing the opener 6-4. Norrie has fond memories of playing at this venue, having advanced to the title match in 2021 and shows his form on grass with another excellent volley. The world number 13 is playing in his first match on this surface since July when he lost to Novak Djokovic in the Wimbledon semi-finals. The 27-year-old wins the second set 7-5 in a tie-break when Kekmanovic sends a forehand long. Norrie picks up his 30th tour level win of the season. Next, he will face Australia's Jordan Thompson or Canada's Milos Raonic. For more tennis, we swing over to Kenya, where Morocco won the Billie Jean King Cup after Billie Jean King Cup Africa Group 3 title after beating Tunisia 2-1 in the final. The win in Nairobi lifts the Moroccans to the Euro Africa Group 2 stage. CGTN's Joy Kiruki Juma has more. The cold Nairobi weather presented a challenging 2023 Billie Jean King Cup Africa Group 3 tournament in Kenya. However, players from the 12 nations taking part braved the elements to serve up a memorable competition. Ultimately, Morocco was crowned champions after defeating their North African neighbors Tunisia 2-1 in a hard-fought final. In the third and fourth place playoffs, hosts Kenya, inspired by Wimbledon doubles junior champion and crowd favorite Angelo Gatoy, edged Zimbabwe 2-1 for bronze. Definitely, I feel happy now, and for sure the team is happy, so I'm happy that we finished third place. You know, I think my players have learned a lot from the likes of um, Angela here, who's played at a much higher level. That alone is, is big, big, big for, for the rest of the, the players that are here. Nigeria defeated neighbours Ghana 2-0 in the 5th and 6th place playoff, with Mauritius crashing Botswana to finish 7th. Namibia's 2-1 victory over Burundi ensured they finished 9th, as Uganda defeated Seychelles in the relegation playoff. The event uh, has been really of a challenge. Uh, uh, for some reasons. Uh, one, uh, the level of uh, competition uh, to my player has been a bit high uh, due to our players being uh, a development team uh, back in Uganda. Participants and organizers hailed the event after a successful week of competition. This has been a great event. Uh, the organization is quite okay. The crowd are uh, well educated and the uh, hotel, transportation, general organization, the food, I mean, it's well uh, organized and uh, I'm happy to have been part of this uh, uh, tournament. We've had uh, our courts have held. We've had wonderful weather. The teams have great team spirit. They have, you know, the competition has been amazing. And you can see that from the three setter matches they've been playing or 2-1 um, uh, ties. And uh, we are so grateful. Everything has run smoothly. And we are extremely grateful for that um, outcome. Hosting of the 2023 Billie Jean King Cup Africa Group 3 tournament has helped Kenya revive tennis in the country. <laughs> 
East African nation now hopes to be the center of the sport in the region and the continent. Joy Kiruki Juma, CGTN. We stay in Kenya for motorsport and ahead of the safari rally. Drivers Hot Tanak and Pierre-Louis Loubet join marathon world record holder Elu Kipchoge for a training run aimed at helping set the mood for this weekend's race. Tanak Loubet and co-driver Martin Yerovea join Kipchoge at an altitude of 2,400 meters over the Kenyan highlands. The man whose marathon world record sits at 2 hours, 1 minute and 9 seconds has been training near Kaptagan. In homage to Kipchoge's environmental, environmental work, the racers each plant trees to commemorate their visit before embarking on a light jog with the two-time Olympic gold medalist, the training partners and selected teammates. The group then visit the local school supported by Kipchoge's charitable foundation. Now tonight, the 2019 World Rally Champion is gifted an autographed pair of the Kenyan's running shoes, which the Estonian graciously accepts before presenting Kipchoge with one of his official racing helmets. Oh, it is uh, incredible. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a dream answer. You know, it's good to meet uh, other sportsmen from the other sectors. And, you know, I'm happy to visit them. Yeah? I'm happy to exchange knowledge. I'm happy to tell them what we follow you and not to uh, actually uh, uh, our plans towards uh, the sporting world. We are all the same people. We are all uh, doing professional sport. Is it a uh, technical sport or motorsport or uh, is it a marathoner like, uh, like he is? You know, uh, both of us, we are uh, pushing to the limits and, and we are trying to get the maximum out. But uh, as we can see, the maximum comes only when you have the package around you and then the people around you. Up next, we have the Asian Fencing Championships in Wuxi. Host team China clinched their second gold medal when Mo Zoe defeated Ha Tae Gyu of South Korea to win the men's foil individual final. Mo comes in having never previously won a major tournament and jumps out to a 3-0 lead in the title bout. The 27-year-old continues to pull away en route to a 59 victory that secures his first gold on the international stage. China's last men's foil individual winner at this event was Olympic champion Lei Sheng, who beat compatriot Huang Liang Zai at the 2012 final. We turn to the Chinese University Basketball Association final in Chengdu, where Chen Guohao scored a game-high 30 points and grabbed 10 rebounds to help Guangdong University of Technology beat defending champions Tsinghua University 87-83 and claim their first ever national title. This is the second straight year for these two schools to face each other in the final. Last season, Beijing-based Tsinghua won 89-86 and lifted a third consecutive trophy. But this time, CBA draft prospect Chen is in solid form throughout the playoffs. The 23-year-old forward nails 9 of 17 shots on his way to registering a double-double for the side from Guangzhou. Trailing by one down the stretch, Zhang Cheng knocks down a 3 and Transition. And that puts Guangdong Tech ahead by a juice with just 12 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Then, following a foul, Chen calmly converts two free throws at the line to extend their advantage to four. And when Xinhua's Yang Qihao misses a buzzer beater, Guangdong Tech clinch a four point win and capture their first national basketball title in university history. Chen is named MVP of the finals and says the breakthrough victory belongs to the entire squad. We had already achieved our goal after reaching the final four, and then we just played game to game in Chengdu. After knocking out Central South University in the semifinals, we felt no pressure challenging Tsinghua in the championship contest. Our team is united as one, and I think this victory belongs to everybody on the team. Stick around because more football action is going to round out this edition of Sports Scene. China tries to battle back late but falls to Australia 5 3 in their second Group C match at the AFC Under 17 Asian Cup in Thailand. back with a return to the football pitch. Australia got their AFC Under-17 Asian Cup campaign back on track after beating China 5-3 in Chonburi, Thailand on Monday. Australia lost to Saudi Arabia 2-0 in the first match and ended this contest needing a win to stay in contention for a place. In the last eight, they take a 1-0 lead when the story Irankunda scores up in nine minutes. The Socceroos go on to double their lead just three minutes later, thanks to Giovanni Di Abreu. China pull one back through striker Wang Yudong in the 14th minute. But the two-goal advantage is restored four minutes later when Irankunda gets his second from distance. Fantastic effort, 3-1 Australia. Mitchell Glasson adds the fourth in the 25th minute. But just before half-time, Kai Ji Wen reduces the deficit for the PRC. And it's 4-2 at the break. In the second half, China performed better. Wang works a give-and-go with Mei Shui Jun inside the box for a nice lob to complete his brace and make it 4-3. But any hopes of a comeback are dashed when Nathan Amantidis puts the icing on the cake for the Aussies in the last minute of stoppage time. 5-3 is the final score. China will face Saudi Arabia next, while Australia take on Tajikistan to decide who will progress from Group C to the last eight. Over in Italy, new Napoli boss Rudy Garcia has outlined his intentions for the first time since taking over the Serie A champions. The Frenchman, who was most recently coaching Cristiano Ronaldo at Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia, was given the job after title-winning boss Luciano Spalletti decided to take a year-long sabbatical. He says he is up to the challenge as the club hope to repeat their first Scudetto in after 33 years. The Italian Serie A has changed a bit since I left because seven years have passed. But I must say that this year, Italy has shown, on a European level, 
that it has great clubs and has achieved great things. Napoli are one of those great teams. They won the Scudetto after 33 years. So I come to a winning team and City and that suits me very well because I arrive here with ambition and I found a very ambitious club president who will not stop after winning the Scudetto and on this point we agree. I know the challenge is difficult but in life there are no simple things. So I can't wait to start especially working with the team. We finish with more football news and 10 days after lifting the Champions League trophy which completed an elusive treble. Man City manager Pep Guardiola is turning his focus to bolstering his squad for next season and one player seemingly not on the Spaniard's shopping list is PSG forward Kylian Mbappe. I have no idea. You know more about it than I do. You know which team he wants to go to. Neymar Thibaut Courtois has left Belgium's training camp ahead of the team's Euro 2024 qualifier in Estonia. The departure comes amid reports that the Real Madrid goalkeeper was frustrated not to be handed the captain's armband for the previous game, a 1-1 home draw with Austria. The Belgian FA confirmed the 31-year-old has left the camp and will miss Tuesday's match with no reason given. Courtois played in the draw on Saturday but was reportedly disappointed with coach Dominico Tedesco's handling of the captaincy. In the absence of Man City midfielder Kevin De Bruyne, who missed out after picking up a knock in the Champions League final, Tedesco gave the armband to striker Romelu Lukaku, who responded by scoring Belgium's equaliser. Okay, before I say goodbye, let's take another look at today's top stories on Sports Scene. China beat South Korea 1 0 in a clash of under 24 teams to wrap up their last friendly of their preparations for the Hangzhou Asian Games. Despite the absence of striker Lionel Messi, Argentina continued their Asian summer tour by defeating Indonesia 2 0 in a friendly in Jakarta. And Russian top seed Daniel Medvedev breezed past the USA's Marco Giron in straight sets in the first round of Germany's Halle Open. OK, I'm going to leave you with some more highlights of that under-24 football match between China and South Korea. Be sure to check us out using the handle CGTN14 across Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. And stay right there because the World Today continues next. See you later. The world economy as we know it is about to change. Global Business Reports highlight